I'm sure that many people would like to know, how am I finding sleeping in the car? Well, you'd be surprised. Uncomfortable. <laughs> Very uncomfortable. But, do you know what? Ugh. It's not meant to be easy, is it? The thing is, if I wanted easy, I could just go and rent somewhere. Or I could buy another van. But I am slowly but surely adjusting how I uh, get the best night's rest. Today I wake up in sunny Doncaster, as you can see. Very, very sunny. There is a... Uh, I think the river is over there. And the canal is behind. This car park was nearly full when I came here last night. About 9 p.m. Uh, yeah, now I think there is a camper and a van. Or camper van. So, yeah, just three vehicles now. Uh, it was full, or just about full. Someone pulled up last night in a T5 alongside me and giggled all night long. So, I really should get up and decide what today's plan is. You see, is I'm just travelling towards opportunities I, I want opportunities I don't know where the opportunities will be I don't know where the opportunities are I don't know which direction to go or which direction not to go I'm just yeah I don't know I really don't so my return to the UK just hasn't gone the way that I would have liked it to. You say I came back here with a goal, with a mission, and it just seems like every time I put a step into the goal, every time I get a bit closer, then the mission changes or there's a setback. Life is always full of setbacks, always full of hurdles. And it's very easy to give up at the first hurdle, or at the second hurdle, or even at the third. But sometimes people just keep going. I'm at the point now where I don't want to keep going, but I know it's what I have to do. I know to have what I want for the rest of my life, I have to keep going right now. You see, I came back to the UK in the chance of looking for opportunities to make Marty's future just a little bit better. You've seen over the years that I'm willing to turn my hand at everything. Lazy is one thing that I'm not, but I can't put up with certain things. So working traditional jobs, traditional work in life, I don't think it's ever going to work for me. But still, we have to bite our tongue and just carry on. Following from that puts us to today. Today is a day where I really think about where I need to be, what I want to do, where I want to be placed. You see, the ideal situation for me is I'm a helper. I want to help. I want to help people in many different ways. If that's from gardening to looking after their pets to building a house to helping someone with their van, literally anything. And I really do believe that I'm like the second pair of hands that you haven't got. When I work in construction, I kind of know what needs to be done before it needs to be done. If you require a tool, I know where the tool is. Um, I have this mind where I do walk past things, I see exactly where it is, and I know where it is for the future. So when someone says, do you know where the... Here, there you go. It saves time. It saves people money. But unfortunately, it seems to be that I'm lacking the opportunities of the abundance that I would like at the moment. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm not placing myself in the right place. I ask, I look. I even signed up for regular jobs. The problem is with a regular job for me is I'm residing in the car. This doesn't work. The ideal situation, and I've had the ideal situation, once in Portugal and once here, where a dwelling is provided for me, just somewhere to lie horizontally. I'm not too fussed about anything else I can make do. I learn how to wash out of buckets. I can help myself go to the bathroom. I carry my toilet with me. I have as much stuff with me as I need to just to survive. 
But I don't want to survive, I want to thrive. But I still must be doing something wrong. I'm reliable, I wake up early, I'm in good health. I eat well, I'm polite and well mannered. I don't know what is going wrong. I even went back to doing the trade work driving where I deliver vehicles up and down the country. But without having an address with a driveway that can fit a company car on, there's no way that I can do that kind of work. But that's probably a little bit of a blessing because when I do work like that, I tend to neglect myself a little bit more. I eat the food that I shouldn't be eating. And sometimes I can be out driving for a good 12 to 13 hours a day, leaving no time for myself by the time I get back to wherever I am and I'm organising the next day. It's time to wash and go back to bed, ready to start the next day at silly o'clock in the morning. Now, living out of the car, and I say out of the car because you don't live in the car, like you don't live in the van or you shouldn't live in the van, you should live out of the van. The van should just be somewhere that you go back to. This is where you have your, your meals. This is somewhere where you can rest. This is somewhere where you can get your cuddles. Now, for me, traveling around and residing in the car, it's not the most comfortable. It's not the most convenient. But I understand that life is not meant to be easy. It's not meant to be comfortable. And it certainly isn't meant to just be a walk in the park. Deer Leap. This place, Deer Leap, parked here many, many times in the past, just in the car park, just here. It's never normally been a problem, uh, or at least I've never had a problem here with local residents or with anyone, with the authorities, nothing. There's never been a problem here. But there is a bonus to me being here right now, and there's a big bonus to me having a Portuguese registration plate here in the UK because I just smile and nod hola I don't really say much more to random people unless they show some sort of engagement then I start a conversation it's uh, yeah quite a, a bonus having the foreign plate because it means when official people are talking I mean if you're talking something official anyway come on if I was going to do something official, if I was trying to get money from the local council to do something, then I would bring them into my office or I would go and see them at a Starbucks or I book out a room at a hotel or a holiday inn. I wouldn't certainly be doing it in a public car park. Now, I wasn't going to make a video, but the video is that this site here where you park just over there, which is over there, we're about to lose the van dwellers, the people looking for somewhere to stop for a night, anyone with a vehicle that is higher than, I don't know, maybe two meters, you might lose this. We might lose this.
So I don't know what the story is. I don't know if it's to do with a campsite. I don't know if it's to do with local residents. I don't know if it's to do with the council or the authorities. So the conversation I just overheard was between English Heritage and two people. Now, I don't know who these people were. I don't know if they were the owners of the campsite or if they were residents from the village or town below. Now, they're a little bit upset because they don't want any travelers to be parked over here or live in there. And because when they set an encampment up, they're there for too long and it's messy. Uh, now I've stopped here many, many times. And sometimes there is a van that stays for two or three days, but I've never seen a mess here. I've never seen a problem here. And if there ever has been a problem with mess, it's normally the people in the living vehicles that actually take the rubbish away because they don't want to be accused of leaving the rubbish behind. Now, English Heritage are not, yeah, they're a little bit upset, to be honest, because the farmer needs access to the gate and he doesn't want a height barrier in because it's going to cause him inconvenience. But this is all that goes on behind the scenes that we don't see. Like we see, we don't normally see this kind of stuff. We don't hear about people's conversations. We don't know who's actually doing this. Um, but then to be in the background of a conversation actually happening direct. Mm. So everyone in the vans, no drama. Bunch of boy racers here last night. Yeah, mess. And that's all it is. Why didn't they just take it with them? One button.